Hello friends. In this video, we will be making the compound paracloro-toluene. For this experiment, we will need 10 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate, 5 grams of sodium chloride, 10 grams of copper metal, 5 grams of sodium sulfite, 12.5 grams of paratoluidine, 3.5 grams of sodium nitrite, 12.5 grams of paratoluidine was taken in a 250 milliliter beaker and 20 milliliters of concentrated 36 percentage hydrochloric acid was added to it. Just mix them together with a glass rod and then add 20 milliliters of distilled water to it. Everything was mixed to a uniform suspension. It was then heated on a tripod stand using a Bunsen burner. When temperature is increased, everything dissolves and the resultant solution will be clear but dark in color. Meanwhile, in another beaker, 3.5 grams of sodium nitrite was dissolved in 10 milliliters of distilled water. Both the paratoluvidine solution and the sodium nitrite solution was placed in an ice bath to cool down to 0 degree Celsius. Next we need to make cuprous chloride or copper, copper 1 chloride. For that, take a 100 milliliter round bottom flask. A powder funnel was placed on top. 10 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate, 5 grams of sodium chloride and then 10 grams of copper metal turnings were added to it. Copper turnings got stuck in the powder funnel as I had not cut them into tiny pieces. After mixing them together, 30 milliliters of concentrated 36 percentage hydrochloric acid was added into it and mixed together. The contents of the flask was heated until everything seemed to dissolve and then the resultant solution was almost dark black in color. It took me about 15 minutes for that. Here we have made a solution of 5 grams of sodium sulfite in 500 milliliters of distilled water. With continuous stirring, the contents of the flask were added to the beaker. Immediately you see the formation of a powdery white precipitate. This is the cuprous chloride formed. The beaker was allowed to stand for 10 minutes and all the cuprous chloride sinks to the bottom. The clear supernatant solution was decanted off. Again the precipitate was washed with 300 milliliters of distilled water. Now to the precipitate we add about 30 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid to dissolve it. This will also help stabilize the compound which would otherwise decompose sitting in open air. Now we move to the previously made solution which was placed in an ice bath. A thermometer is placed to monitor the temperature. Cold sodium nitrite solution is added slowly dropwise to the paratoluidine in hydrochloric acid solution. The process of diacetizationization in is taking place here. Temperature should be maintained below 5 degrees Celsius to prevent unwanted reactions from occurring. Once all the sodium nitrite is added, diazonium chloride is formed. Now, the chilled cuprous chloride in hydrochloric acid solution was added to the diazonium solution. Once the whole cuprous chloride solution is added, a lot of solid substances is formed and the mixture becomes viscous. This is due to the formation of addition products. Most of these will dissolve on gently warming on a water bath at around 60 degrees Celsius. This is because the addition products break down at this temperature resulting in the formation of oily droplets of paracloro-toluene. Now extraction of paracloro-toluene is conducted using diethyl ether as solvent. The 
the ethereal layer contains our product. Ether was removed by placing in a beaker containing ethereal solution in a warm water bath. This is done because ether has a very low boiling point and the ether will easily evaporate when the beaker is placed in a warm water bath. Finally, we get the dark red oily substance which is the crude product Paracloro-Toluene. That's all in this video. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you loved the contents of this video, these are all the Patreon supporters who are financially supporting me so that I am able to purchase new chemicals and equipments required for doing my videos. Do hit the subscribe button and the bell button for notifications.